Good afternoon. In 2003, my boyfriend sent me to the Ross department store on Market Street. We were out of money, and it was my job to shop with something to sell for quick cash to buy drugs or to pay for the CD hotel where we, where, where we had been living. Once I was in the store, I eyed a package of men's underwear, and as I slipped it into my bag, I knew I was being watched. What happened wasn't a surprise, because I wanted to get caught. I needed something drastic to happen. When I walked out the door and felt that tap on my shoulder, relief flooded my body, and all I can think of was, yes, please take me to jail, please. Jail might seem like a harsh consequence for shoplifting underwear, but because my boyfriend had convinced me to hold his drugs during a routine traffic stop, I already had a warrant for my arrest. Most people probably don't want to go to jail, but I was desperate for some way to get myself out of a situation I could no longer control. Going to jail seemed like the only way to escape from an abusive boyfriend, get clean, and get on the right path especially when I found out I was eight weeks pregnant. I was already a mother. I had two boys from a previous marriage and a daughter with my, boy, my then boyfriend, Troy. And even though I hadn't been a perfect mother, I hadn't been quite as low as I was at that moment. I had nothing except for the life inside of me and a burning desire to finally make drastic and lasting change in my life. I hadn't gotten to this point overnight. I was born in the Philippines to a very young single mother. When I was still a toddler, she married a US serviceman and we immigrated to California. That marriage didn't last, however, and she had to provide for me and my younger brother on her own. When I was 10 years old, my mother remarried and had my four younger siblings. My mother had very little education and worked long hours to make sure our basic needs were met. I was never hungry, I always had a stable place to live, but I wasn't ready for the responsibility of caring for my younger siblings. And I desperately wanted and needed emotional support and guidance. Even worse, when I was a young teenager, my stepfather began to abuse me. I thought I was doing the right thing by telling my mother, but she took his side told me I was overreacting. I felt like there was no one watching out for me or protecting me. I needed someone to pay attention to me, and I, like many teen teenagers, found ways to get it. I started to cut class and party. I thought I would finally force my mother to deal with me and my problems. But instead, she chose to send me back to the Philippines to live with relatives I didn't even know to finish high school at a very strict all-girls Catholic school. After graduation, I returned to California and to my mother's house, and I quickly, quickly realized that nothing had changed. I had a job and I went to school, but I never really felt like I had a home. I think when I met someone that was willing to pay attention to me, getting married and having a child seemed like a perfect way to create one. That marriage, not surprisingly, didn't last, but my need to have a home and a family was still there, and I quickly entered a second marriage. I think I knew from the beginning of that second marriage that something was wrong, but I didn't know how quite wrong until I caught him doing drugs. The logical thing, of course, would be to leave, to get my sons and myself out of a bad situation. But logic doesn't come into play when you're desperate for the love that you felt was with help from you as a child. When you, when, you, when you will do anything not to be alone. In that situation when your husband asks you, why don't you try it, you say yes. I was 24 and I had become a recreational drug user and my husband was on his way to becoming a full-blown addict. I still had a job, but my life was quickly spiraling out of control. My husband started to get arrested and was in and out of jail. He would have brief periods when he would get clean but he would quickly relapse and the cycle would repeat. It happened again and again until he, a green card holder, was deported. Left alone again, I welcomed a new man in my life, Troy. 
Troy was a drug dealer. He encouraged my drug habit and verbally and physically abused me from the start. For a while, I was able to hide both the drug and the physical abuse from my family, but eventually it caught up with me. I kept losing jobs because I kept, I kept calling sick. I kept losing jobs because I kept calling me sick all the time, either because I was getting over a binge or I didn't want people to see my bruises. My kids, which now included a third child, a daughter, were too young to fully understand what was going on, but they knew something was wrong. My family started to notice that I wasn't coming around as often, and when I did visit, my mom would comment on my bruises, and I would make excuses. I walked into a door, I said more than once. By late 2002, I stopped paying the rent in my apartment and got evicted. I sent my children to live with my mother, but I couldn't stay there because Troy wasn't welcome and I couldn't use at her house. I would visit every couple of weeks, but I spent most of my time with Troy, doing whatever we could to scrape enough cash together to pay for drugs or to pay for a CD hotel. The irony of the situation is not lost on me. When I was a child, my mother was all that I wanted, and now I put my own kids in the same situation. When I would call my mother, she would tell me how much the children missed me, how much they wanted to be with me. It was heartbreaking, but the power of the drugs and the abuse was too much to overcome. When you've been abused for so long, you start to believe that love has to hurt. When Troy stood over me with a gun cocked to my head and told me I was a disgrace to my family, or when I missed my children, he would say, why? What kind of mother are you anyway? They're better off without you. I actually believed him. I wanted to leave, but he was so in my head that I honestly thought that I deserved to be in this situation. The incident with the gun made me realize how serious things had become. He could have killed me. But until that day in Ross, a package of Calvin Klein underwear in my bag and a small flicker of life in my belly, I didn't know I could ever find a way out. After my arrest, I spent three, month, three months in jail. When I was released, I was five months pregnant and determined to make a fresh start for me and my children. The problem was I had no place to go. I couldn't go back to my mother's house because I was afraid that the stress of our shared history would cause me to relapse, and I wanted to avoid Troy at all costs. I also wanted my family to see that I can take care of the ch my children on my own and be independent. I wanted a home of my own. I heard of a program while I was in jail called Jelani House, a residential treatment program designed for pregnant women. I called them the minute I was released, but they didn't have space for me. Keep calling, they said. Keep calling. I called every day, but the next two weeks were the lowest in my life. I slept on the floor at shelters where I would try to cry quietly at night so I wouldn't disturb others in the shelter. I spent my days riding BART from one end of the line to the other until I finally got the news that there was space for me at Jelani House. I stayed at Jelani House and participated in the drug treatment program for the next nine months and gave birth to my youngest son, Matthew. While I was there, my case manager suggested that I apply to Compass Clara House for transitional housing. Even though she warned me that it was a hard program, I knew it was an opportunity to have my own apartment where I could, where I could reunite with my kids. So I knew no matter how challenging the program was, it was the place for me. I moved into Compass Clare House in October of 2004 with my son Matthew, who was then just a few months old, and my 11-year-old son Devin. At Clare House, my life began to change almost immediately. My case manager helped me get a restraining order against Troy and worked with me to successfully regain custody of my daughter Annabelle, who had been living with Troy's mother. Based on the strength of my progress and the stability provided at Clare House, I was actually able to bring Annabelle home on the very same day we went to court. One of the best surprises I've ever had. During my first six months of my stay, I continued to participate in outpatient treatment, 
where I can fully concentrate on my, re my recovery because I knew Annabelle and Matthew were well taken care of at the on-site child care center at Clara House. My children and I got therapy at Clara House to help us process and move forward. When I was ready, they helped me create a plan to further my education and provide long-term stability for my children. In the spring of 2005, I enrolled at City College of San Francisco, and I found myself falling in love with school. Not long after I, st not long after I started, however, my youngest son, Matthew, got sick. The kind of sick that is every parent's worst nightmare. I had taken Matthew to the doctor after he had a high fever that wouldn't go down, but they sent us home. The next day, the fever returned, this time with convulsions, and I rushed him back to the hospital. Matthew was admitted to UCSF, where it was discovered that he had a staph infection that spread to his bones. All through that long night, until well past midnight, Barbara, the Clara House Assistant Program Director and Employment Specialist, was at my side. Matthew spent more than a month in the hospital and had to have two surgeries. Without the support of Clara House, I don't know what I would have done. They helped me coordinate care with my family members from our, from our older children. They visited Matthew and I in the hospital almost every day, even on weekends. The one night I spent out of the hospital to be with my older children, Renee, the child care supervisor at Clara House, spent the night in the hospital with Matthew. I have wondered over and over again, how could strangers care so much for me? I thought to myself, who does that? As frightening as that experience was, I felt confident for the first time in my abilities as a mother. Thanks to Clara House, I had the tools and the support that I needed. I am happy to report that Matthew is now a healthy and happy seven-year-old boy. I returned to school and graduated with honors from City College, and I'm currently enrolled at San Francisco State University pursuing a degree in sociology. And I'm a straight-A student. I also work part-time, and I'm a member of Compass Family Services Board of Directors. I am also very proud of my eight years of sobriety. I have accomplished so much, but the road hasn't been easy. I would like to say a very personal and heartfelt thank you to Renee, Barbara, Shane, Brad, and Nicole from Clara House. Your unconditional support being all up in my business and teaching me never to be late to an appointment has made all the difference in my life. I frankly talk with my children about where we've been and what we've experienced, and they have learned compassion and empathy. Annabelle, who is now 11, has said more than once, when we've seen a homeless person on the street, they should go to Clara House and get the help we got. My son Devin, a senior in high school, recently had to write an essay about an inspirational person in his life. He chose to write about me. It validated everything I, that I had been able to accomplish to hear my son say, when I was little, my mom wasn't around, but now she is, and I am so proud of her. I would like to thank all of you for being here today, showing your support for programs that just don't make a difference in the lives of families, they save them. I know my children thank you too. Milton Berle once said, if opportunity doesn't knock, you build the door. Clara House helped me build my door, and with your support, we can make sure that that opportunity exists for any family who needs it. Thank you.